This character means no. No plus name, and that word means famous. People know your name. Um, no and feeling is consciousness. You know, if you, if you know you're feeling, you're conscious. And no and sufficient means you're content. If you know you're content, you're sufficient. So it's just interesting. But, but it's, not always, um, it's not always clear. For example, this is horse and on top or on top of something. So on top of a horse, what do you think that means? It means immediately or hurry up. Mashan. Interestingly. Here's one, danger and opportunity. You've probably heard this one. They talk about this a lot. It means crisis. Danger, you know, because you know, crisis is part danger and part opportunity. So they say, open heart. Happiness, I guess. If you have an open heart, you're happy. Here, this one's, uh, this one's interesting to me. Add oil. Jayo. Jayo, add oil. It means hustle. Let's go. You know how we, we'll, when we're at a game, we'll say maybe let's get fired up or something? They're, 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 when they're at a sporting event, what their fans scream is, Jayo. Add oil, add oil, add oil, <laughs> which sounds kind of ridiculous, but so does let's get fired up, I guess. <laughs> exactly. Here's one, if you really want to impress the Chinese, use this one. Um, Mama Hu Hu, uh, horse, horse, tiger, tiger. This is taken from an old story in which uh, apparently some guy, some ancient artist, like drew a picture of uh, tigers, and then the emperor said he wanted a picture of horses, so he quickly changed it. It was half tiger and half horse, which means it wasn't that good. So mama hu hu means so so, like men's and men's, like this. So if you, look, if you go to China and someone asks you, you know, about the quality of a product or something, you say mama hu hu, you'll, you'll really impress them. And then this is this one last one. I found this one to be really interesting when I discovered this. The Chinese had great insight here. Here's one, uh, tiger hu and woods lin, which of course means tiger woods, which in Chinese means to fornicate with reckless abandon. <laughs> To go from golf pro to golf hoe, <laughs> to have had more women than major championships. Anyway, this is Dan Joseph from the China Learning Curve. That last clip helps me illustrate an important point about how I like to approach speaking and training on China. The Chinese language is so different and so unusual, at least from a Western point of view, that people really do find it fascinating. Now, I wouldn't want to lecture people for an hour on the Chinese language. That's way too much. But a few minutes pointing out the more interesting aspects of the language is a great way to get people engaged and interested. And since language is so closely connected to culture, I can then use the language to make important points about Chinese culture and business, economics, politics, etc. The end result is to engage the audience while also conveying critically important issues and lessons, which I think is a great way to address any topic. There are actually many aspects of life in China that make it easy to keep things interesting while also making an important point. Cuisine is another such topic. Here's an example of me making the connection between Chinese food and business. I'm in another restaurant, big restaurant, at a buffet, and they've got these, like, I don't know what they were. They're like beetles. They're like this big and thick. And now I'm a little cocky, right, because I'm a China veteran, and I've eaten scorpions. I can handle anything. So I actually pick up one of these things, and I throw it in my mouth while I'm right there next to the table. And it, I mean, it was like a toothpaste consistency, and it tasted like the smell of worms on a rainy day. You know what I mean? It was just foul. I instantly knew I made a mistake. But my, my cup of tea is way back at the table, so I pick up a drumstick right off of the, the buffet table there, and I start eating that to wash it down. And I'm sure the Chinese guy next to me is thinking, they don't even teach the foreigners how to eat a buffet. You go back. Go back. <laughs> and that, that's my piece of advice on, uh, on insects. Thin and crispy, give it a go. Thick and gooey, just say no. That's <laughs> Write that down. That's a keeper. I think um, that's the best thing I've learned. Yeah, right, so far. <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but for you, Jim, I think that's probably the case. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but, um, but like I like to say, you've got to adapt to the local environment, but not too much. You know, you're not going there to be completely, you know, you got to bring your own strengths, your own way of doing things, your own advantages. So adapt, but not too much. You know, eat the right insects, not the wrong insects.